Welcome back to this educational channel called Learn Bio with Janet. Today we'll continue to discuss mitosis and this is the second video on mitosis. In the first video we've already discussed what mitosis is and why it is needed. So today we'll discuss the process of mitosis which includes the stages prophase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase. This topic is from Chapter 6 of the KSSM Form 4 Syllabus and the title of this chapter is Cell Division. This video lesson is suitable for Form 4 students who are studying the new KSSM Syllabus of 2020. The topic concern or the chapter concern is Cell Division and the subtopic is 6.2 cell cycle and mitosis. However, Form 5 students of this year, 2020, who are studying the old KBSM syllabus can also uh, study from this video as the contents are very similar and the chapter involved is Chapter 5, Cell Division in the Form 4 syllabus. Huh? Subtopic is 5.1, mitosis. This video will help you in your revision for the exam. The learning outcomes for today's lesson are as follows. After this lesson, you should be able to describe the stages of mitosis in a cell cycle. That is, the stages of prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Number two, you should be able to arrange the stages of mitosis in the correct order, especially when you are given a set of pictures of the different stages of mitosis you should be able to identify the stages and then arrange them in the correct sequence. Number three, you should be able to communicate about the cell structure of each stage of mitosis by using labeled diagrams. This means that you should be able to explain what happens to the cell and the chromosomes at each stage of mitosis. And that is also by labeling the diagrams and drawing the diagrams. Let us review the definition for mitosis. It is good to memorize all these definitions as it will help you to master biology. Now the definition for mitosis is, mitosis is the division of the nucleus of a parent cell into two nuclei which are in the two new daughter cells. So mitosis is nuclear division where the nucleus divides into two nuclei. And then each new nucleus contains the same number of chromosomes and the same genetic content as the nucleus of the parent cell. So this is the aim or purpose of mitosis. It must form the two daughter cells that are exactly and genetically identical okay, to the parent cell. So two daughter cells formed are genetically identical to each other and to the parent cell. If they are not genetically identical to the parent cell, it can cause problems in health. So we have a diploid parent cell here. Okay, this is the diploid number of chromosomes represented by 2n. That means there are two sets of chromosomes in this parent cell. One set is from the paternal uh, origin, of paternal origin, and the other set is of maternal origin. That means one set comes from the father and the other set of chromosomes comes from the mother. So after mitosis, two diploid daughter cells are produced and they are genetically identical to the diploid parent cell. Let's use the example of a diploid parent cell such as this to explain how mitosis helps the parent cell to produce two daughter cells that are genetically identical to it. Okay, so let's say we have a diploid parent cell with two chromosomes. These two chromosomes have the same structure, the same length and the same position of centromere. So we call them homologous chromosomes. So one chromosome comes from the father, it's called the paternal chromosome, and one chromosome comes from the mother, it's called the 
maternal chromosome. So what is the diploid number of chromosomes in this cell? First of all, we know that this cell is a diploid cell because it has two copies of this type of chromosome, uh, of this length. There are two copies of it. So it is a diploid cell, so we count the number of chromosomes inside, and there are two. Therefore, 2n equals to 2. All right? The 2n stands for the diploid number of chromosomes, and that is 2. Now, some books, or most books, usually draw another pair of chromosomes that are shorter. Together with the long pair, there's a shorter pair. So in that case, 2n will be equals to 4. Okay? But then I will take the this example of a cell where 2n equals to 2. Right, now this cell, let's say, is going to divide in the later part of the cell cycle, and it needs to form two daughter cells that are genetically like it. Okay, with one uh, paternal chromosome and one maternal chromosome. So in order to do this during the S phase or interphase, huh, it will carry out duplication of chromosomes. The cell will carry out duplication of chromosomes or replication of DNA to prepare for cell division. Okay, so how does it do it? Now, first of all, this single strand of chromosome here is actually, it actually consists of a DNA molecule which has a double helix structure all right so it consists of a single strand of dna molecule however when the dna is going to replicate right after the replication of dna we will get two dna strands now huh? and we say that this chromosome has duplicated so in a duplicated chromosome, there are two sister chromatids, one on the left and the other one on the right. And they are attached together at the centromere. Now they are attached together at this point so that both sister chromatids do not get lost and to prevent them from um, being unequally distributed to the cells. So to make sure that they are distributed equally, that means one sister chromatid must go to daughter cell A and the other sister chromatid must go to daughter cell B. So in order to make sure that this occurs, at first they are still attached together at the centromere. But during mitosis, there will be a phase where the two sister chromatids will separate from one another and later they will be found in the two separate daughter cells. Okay, the same for the maternal chromosome. The two sister chromatids will separate during mitosis and each will go to a different pole and to a, will be found in a different cell, daughter cell. In this way, the final products are two daughter cells that are genetically identical, as you can see, to the parent cells. Let's review the cell cycle in order to get a whole picture of what we are studying. So the cell cycle consists of two main phases, interphase and M phase. Interphase consists of G1, S and G2 phase, whereas the M phase consists of nuclear division called mitosis and cytoplasmic division called cytokinesis. So in G1 phase, the cell grows and produces new cellular components or organelles and also synthesizes proteins. Then as it goes into the S phase, the cell starts to prepare for cell division, so it has to carry out the replication of DNA. That means the DNA uh, will double uh, in mass and also it will produce a new strand of DNA that is genetically like the original strand. Okay? So DNA replicates, or we can say that there is duplication of chromosomes. So this long strand of DNA is actually a chromosome and it forms two strands called sister chromatids. But in terms of the number of chromosome, it's still considered one whole chromosome. Huh? This X-shaped structure is still one chromosome but made up of two sister chromatids. Okay, so the difference between this original chromosome and this chromosome here is that the mass of the 
new chromosome here, the chromosome that has duplicated, is double the mass of the original chromosome. The DNA mass is double. Okay? Right, then, after the cell goes into G2 phase, it will still uh, grow uh, in G2 phase and gather energy, accumulates energy for cell division. Next, we have mitosis, where the nucleus divides. So the first phase of mitosis is prophase, P for prophase, followed by metaphase, then A for anaphase, and T for telophase. The short form is PMAT, PMAT, to help you remember the sequence of the stages in mitosis. Okay, a commonly asked exam question. So after uh, mitosis has occurred, cytokinesis will occur, where the cytoplasm divides and two daughter cells are formed. And then the cell cycle ends and a new cycle starts again. Let us now summarize the condition and structure of the chromosomes in, the three, in three different phases of the cell cycle. G1 phase is the first phase of interface. In this phase, the chromosomes are in the form of chromatin, which are long, thin, thread-like structures. Okay, So, they, you cannot easily see the chromosome uh, and count them or see the uh, structure clearly because they look like long, thin threads that are all uh, grouped together. Then in S phase or interface, there's replication of DNA where each a long molecule of DNA produces another copy of itself. Okay, so that means now each chromosome is made up of two sister chromatids joined at the centromere. So here the DNA mass has doubled compared to the original condition. That means if in G1 phase the mass of DNA is one unit, in S phase it will become two units. The DNA mass will be two units, huh? double. But the number of chromosomes is still unchanged. This is still one chromosome, although the mass is double. Huh? So remember that because uh, there will be certain questions asked about this where they will test your concept or your understanding huh, of this. Now, so after S phase, there is G2 phase and then the cell goes into mitosis. The first phase of mitosis is prophase. So what happens to the chromatin or the chromosome? Now the chromatin will coil up. It will like, you know, when you take a long wire and you coil it around a pencil. Huh? So it will become shorter and thicker. Then we will see it like what we usually see under the microscope, the light microscope. You'll see the chromosomes as an X-shaped structure. Actually, it's the same like this one here, huh? except that now it's become thicker because the chromatin has coiled up. Okay? Now, why it coils up will be explained when we talk about mitosis. Let us discuss the appearance of the nucleus at interface before mitosis. Before mitosis, the nucleus is big and well defined during interface. Chromosomes are in the form of long, thin, thread-like structures called chromatin in the nucleus. As we can see here, it's like a big group of threads, a huh? cluster of threads. Number three, the chromatin will condense during prophase of mitosis. Condense means that they will coil up and become shorter and thicker. For example, just like a wire, which we coil around a pencil. So the wire becomes shorter and thicker and it will not be uh, long and thin like before. So when the chromatin condense, they will coil up, become shorter and thicker and they will form the chromosome structures that can be seen under the light microscope. So what is the reason for this coiling? So the coiling allows the chromosomes to be moved around easily and they will not get entangled. Thus, this will prevent damage to the chromosomes during the process of mitosis. Let's begin to discuss mitosis. We start with prophase. In prophase, 
In the nucleus, chromatin shorten and thicken or condense to form chromosome structures that are visible under the light microscope. So for example, this is a long thin strand of chromatin, but there are two because there is duplication uh, of the chromosomes. So they will coil up like a, a wire, it's called a round a pencil for example. So you become shorter and thicker, all right? And then we will get the chromosome structures as seen here. So each chromosome is made up of two genetically identical sister chromatids, like this one, one here and the other one here, huh? joined at the centromere. Okay, or you can see this example here. So if you want to label the sister chromatids, you must have two labels, one for this one and the other one for this one, for the other one. Okay, then you can call them sister chromatids. If you have only one, you're labeling, you are labeling only one arm here, one of these structures, then you call it a chromatid. Okay, right, so each chromosome is made out of two genetically identical sister chromatids joined at the centromere. So actually, the sister chromatids were formed during the S phase of interface, uh, during the DNA replication. Third point, the nuclear membrane disintegrates or breaks down this nuclear membrane. So we draw a dotted line uh, to show that it's breaking down. Fourthly, the nucleolus, the black spot here, disappears. Then the two pairs of centrioles, this pair and this pair, moves to the opposite poles. Now to draw the centrioles, you just draw two rectangles at right angles to each other. Uh, draw two rectangles at right angles to each other. So they move to the opposite poles. Okay, so the poles are the two ends of the cell. So this marks the point, the two points where the sister chromatids or the chromatids will move to uh, during the nuclear division later on. So uh, spindle fibers begin to form between the centrioles. So these are the spindle fibers. So the centrioles form spindle fibers, which will help to pull the sister chromatids apart later on. All right. Now here I've circled some of these points, meaning that these are the important points that you must remember when you are asked to explain what happens in prophase. A common question in the exam. What happens in prophase? So there are a few events that happen in prophase. Five events. Huh? So you have to recall them. I will be giving you an acronym. Huh? Uh, further down to help you remember what happens here in prophase. All right, so here is the acronym. Remember CNS bracket squared. That means two Cs, two N, and two S. Okay. So what do what does the C stand for? Firstly, chromatin, uh, shorten and thicken. So C for chromatin. Okay, shorten and thicken. So we can see that. The, you can see the structure of the chromosomes more clearly under the microscope. Now, the other C is for centrioles, move to opposite poles, left pole here and the right, the pole at the right. Okay, the pole on the left and pole on the right. Now, N, N stands for nuclear membrane. Nuclear membrane disintegrates and nucleolus disappears. So, there, these are the two Ns. And S, S stands for spindle fibers formed uh, by the centrioles. Another S is actually for the two sister chromatids. That means each chromosome consists of two sister chromatids. Okay, uh, that one is not that important, but it's just for you to know. Uh, if you're asked to explain the events that occur, you can talk about the others like Chromatin is shortened and thickened to form the chromosomes. Centrals move to opposite poles and so on. Now, so I will encourage you to take time to draw and label this drawing. You can screenshot it and also label all the parts like this. You need to know all the names of the structures uh, like centrals, uh, centromere, because these are commonly asked questions in the structured question, spindle fibers and so forth. Make a beautiful, colorful drawing that you will love. Okay, now for the chromosomes, please, uh, you can color, it's okay, but if not, just color one black and leave the other one white. Let us look at the events that happen in prophase and watch this animation. So, referring to the events that happen in prophase, again, we can use this acronym CNS squared. 
or you can also try this one pros and cons you can choose this if you like pros and cons means kebaikan dan keburukan right now or uh, the good and bad effects of doing something so pros here the pro stands for profits cons has the cns and then you have a squared there huh? so these are all the events that happen in profits cns squared huh? now the first c is for chromatin shorten and thicken to form the chromosome structures and which we can see under the microscope so these are the chromosomes so each chromosome is made up of two sister chromatids attached at the centromere uh, this is what we can see in profits so the s is for sister chromatids now another c uh, and n uh, we go to n nuclear membrane disintegrates so this nuclear membrane will disintegrate and disappear nucleolus disappears here okay next centrioles move to opposite poles like this and lastly spindle fibers begin to form from the centrioles Okay, so these are the events that occur in prophase. Now, when we are drawing the diagrams for the different stages of mitosis, we have to be careful about how we draw the chromosomes. Can we draw all the chromosomes of the same size? Or should we differentiate and have different sizes? Or can we have all white color chromosomes okay so here are some pointers to help you draw the chromosomes well especially even for the exam questions huh? sometimes they will ask you to draw the cells where 2n equals to 2 or 2n equals to 4 or 2n equals to 6 and so forth okay so how do we draw the chromosomes let's see here let's say the cell has four chromosomes like here okay this cell has four chromosomes. Now, one X-shaped structure is one chromosome. Uh, so, one, two, three, four. So, the four chromosomes, there are four chromosomes in the cell. And this is a diploid cell. Okay, there's two copies of the long chromosome, two copies of the short chromosome. So, so 2n equals to four. So, what is n? The haploid number equals to four divided by two equals to two. Now, the haploid number n equals to two tells us that there are two different types of chromosomes huh? so we use different lengths of chromosomes to represent different types of chromosomes since there are two different types one one type of chromosome can be long the other one can be short okay so draw two long chromosomes because there are two copies of the long chromosomes in the diploid cell and two copies of the short chromosomes okay then how do you differentiate between paternal and maternal chromosomes? Use different colors. So for each set of the, uh, for each pair of homologous chromosomes, like the long ones, you can color one black and the other one leave as white. Or here I use blue and red. Okay. So for exam, we usually don't use color pencil. So you can let one copy of the chromosome be black and the other copy be white. Huh? So remember, use different colors to differentiate between paternal and maternal chromosomes. So apply this rule in the diagrams that you are drawing afterwards for the other different stages of mitosis. The second phase of mitosis is metaphase. In metaphase, what is the most important event that occurs? It's number one. Okay. So I've circled it for you in case you are asked in the exam to state what happens in metaphase, then you mention this. The chromosomes become aligned in a single row on the equatorial plane, which is also known as the metaphase plate in the old syllabus of KBSM. So fifth formers, please take note of that or the equator. For KSSM, we use equatorial plate huh? according to the textbook. Always follow the terms in the textbook. So the chromosomes become aligned. Aligned means they are arranged in a straight line or a single row. Now the arrangement is random. It doesn't matter whether the 
long chromosomes go first or which chromosome is arranged with which chromosome huh? it's randomly arranged so then the spindle fibers maintain the chromosomes at the equatorial plane that means the spindle fibers that are attached to the centromeres on the left side and right side will keep these chromosomes in, in their positions in the middle of the cell so the equatorial plane is in the middle of the cell it's an imaginary plane and when the chromosomes are arranged here is to get them ready for the separation of the sister chromatids in each chromosome so this shows you that the cell is very systematic during cell division it wants to ensure that one sister chromatid goes to the left pole and the other sister chromatid will go to the right pole in this way the distribution the distribution of the sister chromatids will be accurate and each daughter cell will have the same number and types of chromosomes as the other one huh? so if you remember that cell is very systematic in carrying out this all this uh, cell division then you can understand mitosis very well all right so spindle fibers maintain the chromosomes at the equatorial plane centrioles are at the opposite poles of the cell so the centrioles have positioned themselves huh? the centrioles have positioned themselves at the opposite ends of the cell they are like the goal posts for the sister chromatids to go to huh? one on the left and one on the right side Metaphase ends when the centromere begins to divide. Now, the centromere that holds the sister chromatids together will divide so that the sister chromatids can separate. Okay, now let's look at the second cell here. This second cell is obtained if I rotate this cell 90 degrees. Then the equatorial plane becomes a horizontal plane instead of vertical. Okay, so is this uh, drawing correct? Yes, this drawing is sometimes seen also uh, in questions and is still metaphase. Now, in this case, the poles are at the top and bottom. Okay, not the left and the right anymore. Let's have a look at the animation here. So, chromosomes are aligned, meaning they are arranged in a straight line at the equatorial plane in the center. Huh? So they will align themselves in the center of the cell at the equatorial plane and each chromosome, uh, that's the equatorial plane, each chromosome is attached at the centromere by spindle fibers to the two poles on each side. Like this. So this is the drawing for metaphase, which you can draw into your notebook. And draw the four chromosomes at the equatorial plane, or for the fifth formers, starting the old KBSM syllabus, you can label it metaphase plate, the old term. Then make sure that you draw two long chromosomes and two short chromosomes. Also make sure you differentiate the paternal and maternal chromosomes. For example, you can shade uh, one set, the long chromosome and short chromosome, shade it black and the other set you can leave it white. If you want to use colors, you can use different colors like red or blue or whatever. Huh? And there's no fixed arrangement for these uh, chromosomes at the equatorial plane. No need to draw long one, one long chromosome here and the other end must have a long chromosome. Because the arrangement of the chromosomes at the metaphase plate is random, or in Malay we say secara rawak or sui pian, huh? as long as you have two long chromosomes and two short chromosomes. So in anaphase, the third stage of mitosis, the centromeres divide into two. Huh? The centromere divides into two like this. And the sister chromatids will separate from one another. Okay, so because the spindle fibers, uh, why do the sister how do the sister, sister chromatids separate? Spindle fibers shorten and contract, and they pull 
the central mirror of the chromatids to the opposite poles of the cell, uh, like this. Okay, the, the spindle fibers, I imagine that it contracts and it pulls the central mirror to the opposite poles of the cell. Okay. Now, of course, all this uh, movement of the sister chromatids, uh, the opposite poles of the cell, occurs simultaneously or together. Uh, they occur together. All right. Not one at a time. Okay, so spindle fibers shorten contract so that sister chromatids separate and are pulled to the opposite poles of the cell. Okay. And anaphase ends when the chromatids arrive at the two poles. Okay. So point one and two are important when you discuss anaphase. What happens in anaphase? Centromeres divide into two, sister chromatids separate, and they are pulled to the opposite poles of the cell huh? when the spindle fibers shorten. So these two points are important. So here's a drawing that you can draw to show anaphase and label all the parts. Here, the sister chromatids separate and move to opposite poles of the cell when the spindle fibers contract and shorten. So they will pull the centromeres first, uh, followed by the two uh, other parts of the sister chromatids to the poles. So the centromeres should go first. Therefore, if you draw the drawing like this, for the chromatid that's going to the left pole here, this is wrong. Uh, because the centromere is going, is lagging behind, and these two parts go first. This is wrong. Okay, the correct way is this one. So make sure you draw with the centromeres pointing towards the poles. The V shape pointing towards the pole. Huh? Lastly, we have telophase, the fourth stage of mitosis. Chromatids arrive at the opposite poles, and now they are called daughter chromosomes. All right. So now each chromatid here becomes a new chromosome. So there are complete set. Huh? So each pole contains one set of complete and identical chromosomes as the parent cell. Chromosomes uncoil and form fine chromatin threads. So they go back to the original condition, like in interface, when they form the fine chromatin threads. Spindle fibers disappear. And nucleoli, li, nucleoli or nucleolus and new nuclear membranes are formed again. So everything is going back to the original uh, stage before mitosis, right? The allophase is now is then followed by cytokinesis, which is the division of the cytoplasm. Here is the picture that you can copy for the stage of telophase in mitosis. You can label the centrioles. Daughter chromosomes or chromosomes and nuclear membrane forms again. Please take note that when you draw the chromosomes, they are all made up of a single strand of DNA. They are single stranded and they are no longer in the form of two sister chromatids joined at the centromere, like the X shaped chromosomes that were present in prophase of mitosis because the sister chromatids have separated so the end product of the cell division is always single stranded chromosomes okay don't draw the x-shaped chromosomes for the final uh, for the daughter cells that are formed here is a summary of the whole process of mitosis firstly before mitosis in interphase Chromosomes are in the form of thin and thread-like chromatin. When mitosis begins, the first phase is prophase. The chromatin shorten and thicken to form chromosomes. The nuclear membrane disintegrates. Nucleolus disappears. Centrals move to opposite poles and spindle fibers begin to form. Next, in the second phase of mitosis, metaphase, chromosomes become aligned on the equatorial plane. That means they are arranged randomly on this plane, which is sometimes called the metaphase plate. Thirdly, in anaphase, 
the sister chromatids separate as the centromeres divide. The sister chromatids are pulled by the contraction of the spindle fibers. They are pulled by the spindle fibers to opposite poles of the cell. Lastly, in telophase, the chromatids arrive at the opposite poles. Nuclear membrane, the nuclear membrane is formed again, and then cytokinesis begins. Two diploid daughter cells are formed. That's all for this lesson. In the next lesson, we will discuss cytokinesis and mitosis in the onion root tip. We will also try exercises and hot questions related to this topic so that you will be able to reinforce your understanding and learning of this topic. Thanks for watching. Share, like and subscribe. Goodbye for now.